Hello and welcome to another Full Court Press podcast, a college basketball experience. You know why I'm jacked up? Two things. We got another five-star review. Oh, I love those five stars. You love five stars. I love five stars like I love golden girls at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> now, he- here's what I forgot to mention to you. Um, uh, I don't have a mic stand, but I got the uh, – you see that? It's pretty nice. Look sharp. So on the review – Okay, mm-hmm. I'm just getting it quickly here. Um, and you know what's nice once you get a certain amount? It's like right under the Full Core Press podcast. So I- I'm curious, first of all, it won't let me open it. Um, who wrote this uh, review? And I don't know why it's not opening. Okay, here we go. So um, it says LT and Sammy D. Five stars. Upset loyal customer 101. Love it. Exclamation mark. I love exclamation marks. Great college hoops insight. Exclamation mark. Awesome energy from the host. Host or hosts? Host. Oh man, that's gotta be you. You bring you bring the heat, baby. Just wait a second. Just wait a second. Let me let me bring it down like Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> I wish you could respond to that and just be like, at least I bring something because you get a lot of great questions. So I feel like I got a little pat on the back for once because usually it's always like great question, Sam. Very thoughtful question, Sam. I did get a couple great questions from our last pod, pod a couple podcasts. So let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. How epic was it last week when we were together again? It was fun. I mean, first of all, it was just good to see in person. Good to see in the flesh. You know, I Bam. picked you up at picked you up at the airport. Got yeah, a big I gotta I gotta put in. that on there. Yeah. 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 We got a lot of odd looks at the airport. Tell me why we got odd looks at the airport. I don't know. I picked you up in style. Yeah, you picked me up with this big sign with our full court press podcast logo with full court press. We didn't add a QR code, but that's okay. And it said LT. Do you know how many looks we got from random people? It looks of optimism, of pleasure, of excitement. Hope. 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 Like being like, yeah, let's, we're giving the people what they want, man. And yes. Uh, yes. it's, uh, it's, it's shown in those five stars, but uh, yeah, I'm picking you up at the airport for the rest of your life with that sign. So, okay. Just add a QR code <laughs> All right, well, I'll, on the, on the front I'll, and I'll, back. Okay. So let me tell you something. So when I landed back here in Cleveland, oh, yo, yo, or Ohio, as people from Ohio state call it, um, my, sinus and head pressure like dissipated very quickly i was hurting dude i picked you up from the airport and 20 minutes down i-25 which is the highway up here like you were like yeah no i'm i'm, I'm feeling it like the altitude yeah, I'm like, to we stuff water yeah yeah you know when i really really felt it though and i'm actually like i'm actually in decent shape like i can act like i can play basketball all day all night <clears throat> So we, I run out on the court at Colorado State right before we interviewed uh, Isaiah Stevens and Coach Medved. And uh, Sam decided to throw me a pass ahead. The problem is the jackass did it on purpose. He threw it a little bit too far ahead. So what did I do? I'm it was, a great, it was a great pass. It was, it was a, great, a great lead for someone maybe to, like for me 25 years ago. Cool. And I swear to God, I made the layup. Uh-huh. And I jogged back and I literally <laughs> jogged out of the arena and I was like tilted over like I was gonna have a heart attack. You were done. You were cooked. Yeah. And I and I you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. That's why a lot of teams probably don't go out there to play some of these teams in that environment mm-hmm. because it's just it's a it's let's be honest. I mean, I played my junior, I think I told you at Air Force. Yeah. We played Air Force in Montana out Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Dude, it was hard that first couple days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. It's it's really difficult those first couple of days. So we uh we had a good trip. We saw some uh some Mountain West basketball, which is <laughs> phenomenal. What did you think about the Mountain West? Like just just kind Not of many I mean what well, we can Not kind of get dunks. into some of the games and stuff, but just like as an overview, is it did it meet your expectations? I know you've kind of started watching more of it throughout the season, but yeah, it's just and I who which coach did I tell you it's too damn late for me? They just laughed at me. Um I will tell you it's it's fast pace, it's power five, power six basketball to me. Um mm-hmm. and I mean the interviews we had, the facilities, the environment, oh my god, like Wyoming's struggling a little bit this year. Yeah. But like when it got a little bit ruckus when they kind of made a run at Boise State, it was pretty cool. Like I'm on the arena and stuff like that, uh are on the arena floor, and uh Boise State's good, man. 
Boise State is good. Yeah, man, they've uh, yeah, they're one a of lot the of white guys kind of growing teams every year. A lot of white guys, yeah. but it's yeah, a lot like, of white I mean, guys. <laughs> they, Remind me of the Duke teams from like the the eighties and nineties, like. They had like the one black guy and all white guys. Yeah, I mean they play good basketball, and you know, it's. It, hey, time out, time I, out. Are there black people in in Idaho? Yes. Okay. <laughs> there are black people in Idaho. Idaho. I'm sure. I mean, um, I couldn't tell. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's you know Boise State. Like I get to watch them every year because they come up to Colorado State and whatnot. But it's like, and I do feel like even though some players have changed out throughout the, it it looks like the same team year after year. (laughs) Like the way they play, and I feel so. Leon Rice is the coach. I feel like his son Max has been on the. I feel like his son Max has been on the team for like fourteen years. (laughs) Thirty-four. It's like I checked his birth certificate. He did two year, extra years in high school, and, and Max Wright is thirty four years old. Yeah, it's crazy. So, but I mean, they're they're a good team, man. And you posted yeah. some stuff on the Instagram page um, with some of the highlights from that game, and mm-hmm. you got some really good one shots dunk. from court sites. One so. dunk, one yeah. dunk. Yeah, but it was a good game, and yeah. Um, yeah, I mean Wyoming. I think it was like a two point game with five minutes left in the first half. Yeah. And then kind of Boise State pulled ahead after that. But, you know, first 45% of the game, I mean, was it was close, you know, mm-hmm. and Wyoming hung in there. And um, it was uh, it was fun to talk to Coach Linder a couple, the day after – two days after that, was it? Yeah. Uh, it was two days, yeah. So we yeah. watched some starting eight. Pygmy and Bird went straight up, mm-hmm. and we, we interviewed him Monday. Yeah, so, I mean, it was fun, you know, and um, – What did you think so- of the uh, Linder interview? I thought it was good. You know, I thought it was a good, um, honest interview where, Mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at a program like Wyoming who, you know, in the past couple of years, they've been the top team in the Mountain West, you know, and, you know, now you're, now you're throwing in like, uh, NIL and you mentioned, you know, some of these programs are, you know, they operate like a power six, you know, Mm -hmm. and, you know, Wyoming, I feel like is having a hard time catching up um to some of those other programs who have a head start on NIL um but it's you know I think coach Linder's a good coach for sure um but Great I think coach. he's got to yep. I think you have to you know I I looked at some of the analytics like I do and mm-hmm. I'm like man that's it, it, it's hard to compete in your conference you know when your home attendance is 50% of every away games attendance yes right? And it's like, you know, they're not a, you know, they're not a bad team at all. And like, I, I think I mentioned on the interview, like coach Lender pulled a rabbit out of his hat during the off season. You know, I think in like Mm -hmm. June or July, he had three scholarship players and, you know, I mean, he's, he brought in, you know, nine, 10 players. Yeah. But but look, you look at who he lost. He had, he lost Graham Ike, who's starting for Gonzaga. Yeah. He lost Noah Reynolds, who's one of the top players in the Horizon League, went with Sunday and Wicks to Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, he lost uh, Jeremiah <laughs> Odin, and I'm not going to knock the ball. Lost Sunday and Wicks, too. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> lost, yeah. But I mean, I but mean you think about that. You lost a guy. Yeah. Jeremiah Odin was is, um, averaging like 10 points a game. Graham mm-hmm. Ike, I think, was their leading scorer. And then Noah Reynolds, I don't know what he scored last year, but he's a great player. I mean, if he's, aver- he's averaging yeah. high double digits for Green Bay. So. And they're looking really good in the Horizon League. Well, I think that's where it's going to come. Like, I judging, I know we've talked to a lot of coaches this year where they're like, yeah, we have, we used to have five years, right? Now we might only yeah, have two or two. three. And it's yeah. like, when I look at what happened to like Coach Lender's team from last year to this year, I'm like, it says a lot of positive things about Coach Linder that he mm-hmm. recruited these players, he developed them, he, re- he, you know, he had this assistant coach that's now a D1 head coach and right. doing well this year. Like it shows a lot about him. Where it's like when you have these programs that are doing what he's doing, and we've talked to a couple of them. You know, you're mm-hmm. all of a sudden going to have an off season, right? Where you like it, it's it, it's going to be very reactionary because you're not planning on like oh, right. In years past, it was like, okay, this senior is leaving or this fifth year senior is leaving and stuff like that. Now you're like, okay, well, this freshman or this sophomore, this junior that I've spent one, two, three years developing and working with, mm-hmm. he just got a deal that I can't compete with financially. Right. 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 And it's like, to me, that's a credit to the coach 
right? But it's like, how do you keep that going? And it's the same thing. And, you know, I know we'll probably talk about Michigan at some point, either, you know, down the road or after the season and what happens with Coach Howard. But it's like, I mean, you and I have talked about that. And like, how much of that is out of his control? You know, well, I mean, if, if so. credits don't if credits don't transfer to Michigan, how can you fold a coach? Now, exactly, he's had issues with a strength and conditioning coach. Mm-hmm. You know, they've had issues with some players, I guess, here and there. But it's like you can only blame a coach for so much. Yeah. Um, you know, Wyoming's not a a design, and I'm not knocking Wyoming. I thought it was excellent. The people were good. Wasn't a huge fan of the arena food. Um, he did offer sushi though, which was kind of cool. They did all, like, yeah, I mean, that might be. I can't the believe you got that. Mexican. Might be the only place you got in the Mexican state of Wyoming food. that offers sushi. But um, and, and what did you get to eat for dinner? I got the loaded nachos. Yeah, how was that? Uh, below expectation, but it was like it was stadium food. You know, I think we were both really hungry by the time like we ate. Mine wasn't horrible. I wouldn't say my uh, wine was horrible. I mean, at yeah. least they had options because I'm trying to watch my girlish figure. Mm-hmm. No, they, um, they they had good options. No. You could definitely tell like the di- the you know they need a better student section, but you could Did tell they have that, any students. Yeah, they had some student. I mean, you remember the guy at halftime was a student. He almost made like the three oh, three quarter yeah. of a shot, man. That's true. So they had <laughs> like, one. That's, that's great. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the record and I'm like, okay, they're 13 and 16 for the year. You know, they they're on a four game losing streak. But those four games that they they lost, I mean, I think they took UNLV into overtime um, yep. a couple days ago. Like they, hung, they hung in close with Colorado State yesterday. Like it's like that 13 and 16, like. It's I, that's not a bad record for where they were six months ago. Yeah, but remember what I ago. told you. Remember what I told you. Is there like one or two players away? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, one or two players away. What did you think about the uh, the best was the uh, what did you think about the questions in the press conference? There was. It. I'm going. To, <laughs> I'm not going to see what uh, someone said about him, but um, like, dude, the best was when the gentleman. Like I was laughing because you know how like when you like you like envision somebody and you envision their voice. It's like you watch that movie and you or like for me, I'm blind. You go to a strip club, you think the stripper's really hot, and then they get closer, you're like, what the fuck? I don't um, know what you're talking was, about. Whatever. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. I don't really go to those places, but <laughs> from what I've heard from others. Uh, but um like it was like this guy like talked, and I'm like, oh my god, he's a heavy metal DJ. Yeah, that was a that was a rough post game press conference to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, um, that's all I'll say about that. And it's yeah. um, what uh, for those who don't know, like Wyoming's athletic department kind of went through a tragedy two days before that game. Three of their swimmer, three members of their swim and dive team, um, died in a car accident on mm-hmm. Thursday, and then really the next sporting event was men's and women's basketball on Saturday, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, the post game press conference, a couple of the players came out there. They gave um, pretty impactful statements, you know, about how they're coming mm-hmm. together as a community, as a university, as an athletic yep. department, and things like that. And um, yeah, I mean, one of the first questions in the post game press conference was, why aren't you guys motivated? And it's just like, I don't know. It, 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 we, we can move on because I can go on and on about, you know, some of the immaturity of some local reporters that, you know, yeah. we get to we get to witness every once in a while. Yeah. But it's um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, these these are young men and some of them even, you know, just a year or two out of high school, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, Wyoming's had a you know, they've. Like I said, I mean, a lot of the national reporters placed Wyoming like ninth, tenth, eleven in the conference, and you know, I think that they're ninth right now. So, um, eighth but or you ninth, know, so right. But it was funny. the The interesting statement or go back is like, you know, the kind of the rally cry of NIL money because mm-hmm. you know the problem is you get a good player and they're gone, yeah, or you develop a good player and they're gone. Um, you know, and they've got some really good players. I love Sam Griffin. I think he's a senior though. Um, they've got a whole, they've got a bunch, they got a Canadian who I met. We were talking mm-hmm. after hopefully, uh, have another one coming in next year too. Two, two, two more of them coming in next year. Two more. So. Yeah. Two more, two more. So, I mean, it's the thing. So I really, the hospitality, um, you know, they're, um, oh, Nicholas they're Seaman, they're, yeah. well, Nicholas Seaman was awesome. Their SID. Yeah. And I can't, you know, I can't stress enough being, 
a former coach and like yourself, an athlete, um, people don't understand what SIDs do. And they're pretty much like everything to a coach. They're good friends of theirs. They, you know, they do all the stats, all the interviews, all that stuff. So we, we really had some top notch SIDs this, this weekend, this past week. So we went to Wyoming, um, that game. And then we, do you know what one of my favorite parts of the, uh, experience in Laramie, Wyoming was, um, what was it? N- not the nachos. It was seeing somebody in the stadium with a full court press sweatshirt. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, yes. That was cool. So the winner awesome, is, man. yeah, we saw um, Big Matt, um, you know, came. Uh, he's a big Wyoming fan. I reached out to him and said, we're going to be there. Uh, well, I actually told him, during, I said to him, I don't think it really clicked. And, and then I said, hey, we're here. And he came and. Yeah. And uh, what a nice guy, man. And it's, it's fun yeah. to meet people that like, it's awesome, man. It's like somebody who listens and yeah. like, you know, he, yeah. he, he was sporting the full court press sweatshirt and like it, it, that, that, that was just a really kind of, uh, it meant something to me, you know? Yes. Um, being yes. There and if he's our only, only like listener. That, so, yeah. yeah. But if he's our only listener, that's cool as shit. So I hope he's yeah. listening. Shout out to uh, Matt, man. For yeah, sure. Shout out to Matt. That was really cool. Watch his name's probably Mike, but whatever. Uh, shout out to Matt. But um, so that was cool. So then we went to Colorado State. Okay. And I think you got to taste this trip of what I go through when it comes to scheduling. Because yeah. when I landed in Colorado, which was Saturday, we had one interview scheduled. And my wife's mm-hmm. like, okay, so you're going all the way there. You're leaving myself and the three kids, which at, at this point in life, I probably it's a good thing that I left. Um just in general to get away. You know, people need a break from me. Uh, I get it. Um, and uh, I had one. And how many did we have? We had four. We, we had almost four had five. Solid, and then you kind of had five because you got to interview one or you got to interview Jared Lucas after the Nevada game. Just a, a question or two as well. Yeah. And, and we'll I could get, we'll the get same to that. Thing but I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, it was. It was nonstop. And I mean, I think a lot of it is it's, you know, you're in the last five percent of the season right now mm-hmm. you know i mean there's you know th- two to three games left of the season and you know coaches sids players they're all very protective of their time you know a lot yeah, absolutely you know, a lot has to do with okay did we win or lose last night that's going to depend well, here, on if here, we get the interview the or not, so. yeah, but here's the funny part so shout out shout, shout out to trevor the sid at nevada great dude i got to sit beside him you got to sit beside him talk oh, yeah. to a really nice guy and he's like um you know, sorry to get back to you Monday and, you know, Tuesday comes, he's like, you know, if you want, um, I can have coach, uh, after the game available. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so when I coach, if we lost, yeah. my wife would be like, we're just dating. Like, did you win or lose? Lose. I right, don't come home. Yeah. Like, don't just don't come to the apartment. So, and I mean, I had, um, I kind of, um, release some fear and anxiety because I got to meet coach Alford. I talked to him. I told him I was scared shitless of him um, when I was a reporter, young reporter in Iowa. I was on television for KFXA, KFXB. And, Luke uh, from uh, Dubuque. Luke from Dubuque. <laughs> Good evening. This is Luke Taylor. This is the Fox Dodge Sports Report. Um, <laughs> oh, God. I said that for like a year. All the, I used to like talk in my sleep. My girlfriend yeah. at the time would tell me that. No, uh, I, don't but, think, I don't think anybody yeah. would want to interview Steve Alford after a loss. That's for sure. What? Really? And, any? I mean, can you imagine yeah. – interviewing some of these coaches like tad boyle no. at colorado no i mean it, but it was great so we we got to we got to interview uh isaiah stevens and coach medved and um that was awesome we had a lot of good questions we had a lot of fun we shot a ton of content i mean um mm-hmm. the biggest news was um so about two weeks ago i got approved um with uh, uh mike wilson who's uh, going to be a consulting producer for the um nta division one regional in pittsburgh so we're gonna go i actually got a photography pass so i can be on the baseline shooting content um hopefully they don't put me in the second freaking row i will say i will say when you're shooting photography on the baseline like you're so much bigger than every other (laughs) photographer man I'm like, you always see these like, uh, like blooper clips or like clips of like players running into for them, like the photographers, like, like, yeah. like they would run into you and it'd be like running into a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> but you told me my legs were like six inches long, like a foot. Oh my God. It was fun. Cause I mean, I was up in the press box at the CSU game 
and you were across the stadium on the baseline. And I just see you in like your orange air force ones, just like a full, like half a body more than any of <laughs> anybody else. I'm like, dude, you take up too much room. You need to start asking for like two, two passes. to get. Oh, I love it. Well, here's the thing. Like I lounge, man. I'm like sitting there. <laughs> here's the thing. Like when I was at pit, they put me in the second row and I had to kneel. And I swear to God, I felt like I was in prison for two hours. Yeah. Um, it was just painful, but I'm telling you. So the cool thing is, you know, everybody's posting, you know, all this stuff, the Colorado state Nevada game, man, it was, it was awesome. The fans are nuts. <laughs> The cheerleaders at Colorado State are are very charming and lovely, but they got some mouths on them. I mean, they know they're they basketball. Like, oh my God, they're getting after it. Yeah, I'm like, man, Moby. I'm like, do you have any man. younger sisters yeah. for my? Do you have any younger sisters for my boys in like 10, 15 years? <laughs> and my and my boys, uh, Sebastian. Yeah. Um, no, Moby. I mean, it was Madden, crazy. This is the real deal, man. It's uh, what Coach Medved has kind of built in Fort Collins and Colorado State. Man, he's brought basketball to the forefront and. Man, those games are fun to watch. And, you know, everybody in town knows the guys. And, you know, I mean, it's Coach Medved and Isaiah Stevens, like they're local celebrities here. And, um, but that, that, you know, they were, well, they were down by, I think at most like 13 points in the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I think they were down by eight or nine with six minutes left. And, you know, they, they pulled it together. I mean, they won the last six minutes of the game, you know, I mean, it's, I think you said they won. I think the last five minutes they they were they won, and I will tell you, I got the shot. I'm going to post that tonight or tomorrow, uh, a week late, but whatever. Of Isaiah Stevens hitting that like fadeaway. I mean, it was money. People were going nuts. You posted and then, it and on Instagram. Yeah, and then yeah. I will tell you, Lucas from Nevada, and I knew, and I and I got that shot too. <clears throat> I got mm-hmm. that shot too. So we're going to talk. We're we're going to talk to Jared Lucas later this week, I think. And Coach um, Alford. Yep. Yeah, but it's, yep. you know, I don't know what was. I'm I'm going to ask him, what was more surprising: the fact that you missed three of the four free throws when you're like one of the best free throw shooters in the country, you know, at the last minute of the game, or the fact that you made a half court shot with so, no time. So after left. the so so like, everybody's posting that shot and stuff like yeah. that. So I'm like, I posted what you sent me. I think it was, I don't know who it was from. And there was like six tweets from all the major new net networks. Yeah. And then I said, must be nice when they're talking about it when we were at it. And then I, the next photo I put is me and Jared Lucas, like we're <laughs> hugging each other after the game. And I talked to him, really nice kid, well-spoken. Yeah. Um, he probably has the fastest shot release I've probably seen in years. The, the next person yeah. I, I've ever seen shoot that ball that fast was Josh Oppenheimer, who's actually Giannis's Giannis's yeah, shooting Giannis. guru in Milwaukee Bucks. We, we I don't know if you knew Josh, but he was an assistant at DePaul. And uh, yeah, I, I was a student athlete when he was a coach there. So. Dude, he was he was probably one of the best shooters I've ever played with. And I've played with some really good shooters. Um yeah. but no he was really good and talking to Coach Alford one on one and then there was uh can't remember his name nice guy from Nevada Sports Network. And mm-hmm. uh, I apologize for getting his name uh might have been Nick but real nice guy he had some really really good questions. I was really impressed but um uh, you know Coach Alford talked about not getting respect. I mean Nevada is good. Like good, 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 good. Twenty four like and six. They're twenty four and six. They've won five in a row in one of the best conferences in the country. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're a top twenty five team. I'm sorry, and you know what? They beat Colorado State at Colorado State in a packed house with their best player. Their point guard wasn't even playing. Blackshear. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. But you know, give give Colorado State some respect, man. Because I mean, they're they've had a good year. They're, they're fun to watch. And you know, what did you think of the uh, Medved and Stevens interview? Awesome. I love that someone gave us a somewhat shout out after. So everybody, and it was everywhere, right? Yeah. And we asked him, so we do the shot clock. And I said one word to describe the Mountain West Conference. And he said, didn't he say competitive? It's and you tough said, to start with. Tough, tough, yeah. right? And you said, that's exactly what Jeff Linder said. And that, I think, provoked a rivalry in his mind. Yeah. And what did he say the next quote? He said, no, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to give you another one. Un, um, unforgiving. Unforgiving. And what is the first thing he said in his press conference? Yeah, so he walked into the press conference after the Nevada game, sat down, and, you know, the first words out of his mouth was, you know, yesterday I was asked how to describe one word to describe Mountain West, and I said unforgiving and, you know, just like the conference. No, just wait. Just wait. He said, yesterday I was asked by somebody. 
Me. LT is that somebody? Yeah, well, I mean, we're a team, but you know what I sure. mean. Um, yeah. No, but actually, I said it, and if you didn't say Jeff Linder, Wyoming, sure. we would have never got that soundbite. So it was both yeah. of us. Well, I mean, I think um, it helped him are... think about it a little further, and I and I think unforgiving is a better word too. You know, I mean, yeah. the, this conference is just stacked, and you know, yeah. people are saying they, sh- they they're going to get six teams in. <sighs> Again, if I had my ten dollars to bet, and I know you don't like yes, when I say that, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to say they get five in. I just have a hard time yeah, think thinking so, that yeah. they're going to get the risk. They, I think that they do deserve yep. six. Yep. Um, but I just, God, I can't see it. So, no. Nope. Um, but yeah, it was a fun interview, and Coach Medved, like, I mean, that guy is. We're Colorado State's so lucky to have a guy like that, you know. But is he gone? I don't know. I don't know. Um. If you had ten more dollars, you cheat. I ass. think it's well. I, well, I don't think he would go to any program that currently has a vacancy right now. So I do think that there's some coaches. Just wait. How many vacancies are there? I don't know. There's now four. Is there four now? University yeah. of Central Arkansas, as women simply known as the Sugar Bears, yeah. the Bears. I played against them when I was in Arkansas sure. back in D two. Um, Anthony Boone. I don't know if you remember Anthony Boone. I remember. Yeah. What, why why do I know Ole, that name? Ole Miss. He played for coach okay. Rob Evans. He had yeah. a lot of injuries, but he was a great player. He just got fired. They went nine and 23, five and 11, the Atlantic sun in like four years. He was 43 and 96 since 2019. Okay. Um, so I, I don't, that's obviously not going to be a top job for a lot of coaches, yeah. but maybe they're aggressive and they hire someone like a Will Wade. They pay a little bit more money. I know no. they're not going to. I know you gave me that smirk. Um, that's an awful but, take. Well, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, they're almost you're, you're, as bad as my awful predictions. You're, you're better than that. It's Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think Coach Medved will do – he could do really well at a lot of different programs. I don't think there's an opening right now or one that I can think of that may be open at the end of the year that like people are talking about that I think would be a good fit for him. Um, so, and I, and I think he's very methodical, very smart guy. And I don't think yeah. he's going to go. I don't think he's going to go somewhere. Biggie, just biggie, to, biggie, can't you see? Oh man. How dope was that? Best question. Okay. I thought Donnie Jones is smooth operator by Sade was going to like, no one was going to top it. When Nico Medved said juicy. Biggie. My Biggie Smalls. <laughs> I haven't posted that yet. I'm going to post a ton of stuff. This week kicked me in the balls. But I will tell you, that was like mic drop. Yeah. It's hard to be. I mean, it's it, it, it's one of those answers that you're like, yeah, I mean, it's all right. You you know the guys for real, you know? And I can't yeah. tell how many coaches, and I'm not going to name them, but how many coaches are like, yeah, I don't listen to music. And it's like, come on. Like, <laughs> really you <didn't> you? <laughs> Yeah, it was okay. Coach Wade and Coach Wade and Coach Linder. I'll throw them under the bus. Yeah, I mean Coach Boyle started to go down that path. <laughs> no, Brick House. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I mean we had to kind of egg him on to be like, okay, like, and then he was, yeah. Well, we'll get to we'll we'll get to that interview yeah. in a second. So but, let me ask you something. You're talking yeah. about the Mountain West. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of rumors right now that Coach uh, Danny Sprinkle, yeah. who um, is buddies with one of the guests we had on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, is going to be ta- is is the prime candidate for Washington. Now, what's Washington doing next year? They're moving. They're moving. Big Ten. Moving it. Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Probably a. Th- I think he's making like nine hundred thousand at Utah State. It's his first year. He's one of the top coaches to this year. Turnaround programs like a Will Wade, Amir Abdul Rahim, and uh, USF. Do you think he goes? Do you think he leaves after a year? Yeah. You do? I mean, here's I mean, he de- he deserves the choice. What he's done this year, what he's done the last 3 years, I'll give him that, you know. Yeah. Like it's but what he's done to a Utah State team that was picked to finish I think 10th in the Mountain West. Mm-hmm. Like and right now they're 24 and 5. Like in a hard conference, right? Yes. Like 
he deserves to have that option. You know, I'd feel differently if he's been at the school for four or five years and you're kind of on that cusp of, okay, am I going to stay true Mm -hmm. and loyal to this program? Or do I, I think him only being at Utah state for one year and doing what he's done there in 10 months. Right. (laughs) Like I could, I think that that gives him some leverage to make a move sooner rather than later. I don't think, I don't like the wash. I just don't like Washington as a basketball school. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. I mean, that's fair. Um, Well, how many teams do you think the big 10 is getting in this year? Purdue. Yeah, I mean, you have Purdue, Illinois, Wisconsin should get in. I think Indiana was on the bubble. Let me pull them up. Um, Michigan State's on the bubble. Northwestern. Northwestern's on the oh, – yeah. yeah, I mean, it's – yeah, you have Purdue and Illinois are locks, right? Yeah. And then the next group you have is you've got Northwestern, Nebraska, Wisconsin. Like, I don't know. I – I think I think from a I, I mean I just they're getting into the NCAA tournament. Okay, Mountain West is going to get four or five, no questions asked. They don't. I'm going to piss on everybody. I'm going to urinate and poop on every one of the selection committee's houses. That's not a threat. I did not threaten anybody. I didn't say any names, but I I would mentally do that. Um, See, and I think that's the thing. You got to look at that from a coach. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this Big Ten thing, and it's like that. That's going to be a hard one mm-hmm. to do because it's there's going to be some teams in there that have had really good part. And that's the thing about the Big Ten. It's like aside from Purdue and Illinois, everybody's been kind of inconsistent, right? You've had mm-hmm. some. They're, they're very streaky. You play three or four really good games, then you have yep. three or four games where you go two and two or something like yep. that. You know, um, and so I, I would need to stay. That, that's that'll be a fun one for me to take a look at the next couple of days. I do want to kind of study where some of these wins and losses have come from. Yep. I like Nebraska. Um, you know, they're 21 like and nine right now. Yep. Um, 18 and one at home. I mean, two and eight away, which is not good, but, yep. um, and then you have Michigan state who's lost three in a row. And I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a big Izzo fan, but it's like, you have to do, Izzo, you just have to do better. So, Hey, look at this. Know, I'm man. not, it's hey, a big, I'm not, a, I'm not a Michigan state I mean, fan. I, if you asked me right now, I'd say they get four teams in. So do you think I'm a Michigan state fan? <laughs> God, who signed that ball behind you? Jabril Peppers. That's my my wow. oldest is Sam, actually, who we somewhat named after you. Yeah. Um, my oldest son's first ever autograph was no Jabril Peppers. Peppers. He played for the Browns. Okay, so I want to talk about the next two interviews that we had, but I want to. This is pressing to me because this affects my life because I live in Akron. What is your thoughts on UMass joining the MAC conference in all sports, not football, all sports? Now they were a football member, you know. Years ago, you want my opinion since you're kind of hesitating? Oh, no, I mean, I'll give you my opinion. I mean, I think the A10 is a better basketball conference. So, I mean, I think so. Here's the thing I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a nice win for the Mac. And I haven't decided what it's going to do for UMass. Well, here's the thing. So, last year, Coach Frank Martin made they paid him 1.66 million dollars i believe the highest paid mac coach is coach gross that i think at like six six or seven hundred thousand do you think he's gone he goes to another school uh or do they pay him less because here's the thing umass is like one of the founding members of the athletic 10 Mm -hmm. if i remember correctly yeah They've got rivalries in the Atlantic 10. It's good basket. It's better basketball in the Atlantic 10. I think like Mac is right now rated in the Kempom as a conference 22nd. And I think the A10 is rated like eighth. Yeah. I mean, I'm sick of this. Like, listen, the A10 is all about basketball. I'm sick of schools making football decisions when football is not the driving the cart. Yeah, I mean, I think every conference has their own, or every university with that also has their own agenda, you know. Right. Um, as far right. as hey, it might be driving the cart, but it, there's an opportunity for it to generate 
tens of millions of dollars if you move to a certain conference. I don't think he's gone. I mean, he has a contract through 2027. Um, Do you think he knew? Yeah, I bet he participated. Um, Not as like a vote, but I guarantee you, like, I mean, the, the AD at UMass probably like sat down with him and some other head coaches to say like, hey, how do you think this is going to affect your specific program, you know, mm-hmm. both near term and long term. Um, and the Mac's not done because they're at odd numbers. Now. Yeah. Yeah. The Mac's definitely not done. And, um, you know, the, I don't, I, I, I love Frank Martin, man. He's like one of yes. the last old school guys we have, you know, yes. um, we gotta get him on the podcast in the off season. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. You know, I don't think that the, I mean, I, yeah, the A10 is, you know, basketball centric. I think we call it right. Um, but at the same time, it's like they have good years and bad years, right? Like there's some yep. years where I don't think the A10 is that great. Yes. You know, like I don't think that they're the eighth. If you're telling me that they're voted the eighth, they're they're ranked eighth or ninth. I think it's eighth. Like, I think that that's just, and I know Ken Palm is like based on stats and everything. And I don't usually argue with stats, but I just don't see them as one of the top 10 conferences out there this year. You know? So who's ahead of them? We got the power six, you got the mountain mm-hmm. West, right? There's seven. Mm-hmm. You've got probably the conference USA or no, you got American, right? Yep. So that's eight conference USA. Yeah. I mean, conference USA is solid. Um, WCC West coast conference. With Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and USF. Yep. I would put, yeah, I'd definitely put the American Athletic Conference, the Western Conference. Um, Mountain West. Mountain West. Yeah, I mean, it's. So nine. Yeah. I I, mean, I I like the MAC. <laughs> like, yeah, but the MAC, I mean, the MAC is really top heavy. You've got. For sure. Toledo, yeah, you have Akron, Toledo, Akron. Ohio. Right. You know, yeah, you have, but there's a big there's a big discrepancy. It's like Akron, Toledo. Yeah, from the top Ohio. to the bottom for sure. And then, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you're gonna ask me about Frank Martin, like what you did, um, I don't think he's leaving next year. Yeah, um, yeah. I can actually I can see them coming in and doing very well in the MAC and him being very happy. <laughs> yeah, know, in all honesty. Yeah. So, um. And I think that, I mean, when they did his contract, it was 2022, I believe. So just like a year ago, you know, okay. year and a half yep. ago, I, I'm sure that they knew that this was potential, right? That they okay. could be moving yep. conferences. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, let's, we got to talk about one thing quickly, and then we're going to talk about the other two interviews and then wrap it up. <clears throat> so um, about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, uh, I applied for media credentials to the NCAA Final Four because the full court press, as Sam says, is the fastest growing college basketball podcast out there. It is. On the, on the planet. Yeah. On ask planet coaches, Earth. Maybe not Pluto like, and Uranus. Yeah. Uranus is not the fastest. It's very slow moving in Uranus. Okay. <laughs> You miss me, don't you? So uh, Sam, who is one of the um, sharpest and brightest marketing people I know. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, hands down. You're, you're, if I had a top 10, you're easy. No, if I had a top five, you'd easily be about eight or nine. No, you're like, you're, you're probably like first by far. Um, and you put together this presentation, which are going to go to sponsors, partners, you know, it, it's phenomenal. And, um, uh, I sent an email to uh, Mr. Warlock, big up, go Bills. Mm-hmm. I, found, I didn't stalk him, but I found out he was a Bills fan. Um, we talked about UCA. He went to Henderson State. LinkedIn does a lot. It's not stalking, okay, unless someone files a charge. Um, so we went to Henderson State. I went to Arkansas Tech for a year or two. U at UCA. Okay, so we got that connection, but I didn't bring that up. Um, he approved it. LT and Sammy D are going to Phoenix. <sighs> That's right, baby. Final Media four. credentials. Media credentials. I don't know if that's inside the building or anywhere close to the final four or the fan experience or anything else, but <laughs> we're in the media hotel. 
media hotel yeah. and you know what you're gonna do hey this is full court press podcast with luke spelled l-u-k-e <laughs> you're gonna see your boy john rostein and you, no, it's have gonna be, it, you know it's gonna be fun to um meet some of the other college basketball analysts and podcasters and orange. broadcasters and hey. you're gonna wear orange hey, just to Jeff piss Jeff Goodman off yeah i look good in orange you know every, i feel like everybody has their shtick right Yes. And, um, you know, some of these guys have been doing this for 10, 15, 20, almost 20 years 30. for some of them, you know, yeah. and I don't have we, hobbies. I watch college basketball. We, but you and I have been doing this for 16 weeks, right? We've interviewed 23 head coaches, 17 incredible players. We've had like more than five, like just legends of the game, right. On the podcast and like commissioner. Matt commissioners yeah um former ad's like you know former you know all americans and stuff like it's yep. we're we're doing something different right than anyone Mike else Jones. Is, yeah we're, we're doing something that no one else has done it's something you and i talked about during last year's march madness right we we're texting so you back talked and forth. about it i just listened so you have a background in podcast, podcasting and broadcasting and all that fun stuff. And I just said, Hey, like I, it's March madness. I'm really trying to find a podcast or a show that I connect with. Right. Like mm -hmm. that has insights from coaches, players, like doesn't just kind of talk about themselves all the time. And, you know, like actually has some, like some heavy hitting content. And I think you were kind of surprised. You know, a year ago when we yeah. started talking about this, when you're like, yeah, you're right. There's nothing. <laughs> you know? well, I think, and, and also, and, too, and I said this to David Warlock when when <laughs> I, you know, sent him that email. I said, we're the only podcast that consistently every week has players. Yeah. And it's not like this Robbie Avia on ESPN for two minutes. It's <laughs> Robbie Avia and Isaiah Swope. For 40 um, minutes, like for 20, 30 you know, minutes, yeah, right? Talking the about their recruiting process, talking about yeah. like what's different this season, like and getting to some, know them with their favorite we've had some songs. Ball like, players. We yeah. Some no, ball it's it's fun. I mean, we uh, you know, I'll give you all the credit. I mean, you're the one who schedules the interviews and does all the does all the labor energy excitement. Work. Yeah. Host. Um, I just show up every once in a while, but it's well, um, you, what, what did you say to me? What did you say to me? You said you're a guest, and I said you need to start <laughs> acting like a host. <laughs> you bring too much energy. Sometimes I feel like it's um, I'm a guest, but we got no, I was ready to slap you at the Wyoming. But you, you need energy, but you were good at the yeah, end. No, you you've done an incredible job this season, just like finding players that you know you had an instinct that like, hey, they're gonna be names come February, March, April. Yeah, you know, and you hit the nail on the head with just about everybody so far, you know. So it's been, um, yeah. I mean, did like I, I said, did you know, I tell you, we only have one king bed at the media hotel. <laughs> Can't wait, man. Yeah, you know, they'll they'll have to roll in a cot for me. So, um, <laughs> you ever slept with a bear before? God, I, you and I have probably shared a bed in one of our trips. You know, back in the day, I have no idea, yeah. but. Yeah. Um, it's all memorable, huh? I, I'm looking forward to it. And again, yeah. we're going to, we're going to keep bringing, um, you know, the fans, something a little different, you yep. know, and the, the best part is the players and the coaches that we have as guests, they're having a great time. Well, but we yeah. we say 15 or 20 minutes and 45 <laughs> minutes later, we're done like coach Boyle. So we'll, we'll, this is a good segue. <laughs> so we had a uh, university of Colorado and university of Northern Colorado mm -hmm. and we did Northern Colorado first, but, but this is a segue in my trouble Colorado. So, you know, I tell them like, listen, we need like 10 to 15 <sighs> minutes with the player, 15 to 20 minutes with the coach and the, and, um, Troy, the SID at, uh, Colorado, he's an old stalwart, a uh, great guy. Um, listen, to, listen to our podcast. The funniest was, did you ever see him where he, he walked to the side and he thought yeah. he got, uh, hit with the, uh, hand sanitizer. Oh no. Uh -uh. That's funny. <laughs> I was laughing. Yeah. And also too, I, he didn't think that KJ Simpson, who we had on the podcast, who was awesome, you know, 50 or 20 minutes, coach boy was there for 35 minutes. The best question was coach, what's one of your, what are some of your most memorable wins? Dude, he named. So you've, three asked, you've, asked that, you've asked that question to twenty five other coaches this season. Yeah, and, and, and they're and all he like, "Oh, like this this <laughs> overtime win when so and so and such happened, or yeah, I, the, this time I went into Allen Fieldhouse or whatever it was, you know." And it was like Coach Boyle. He like he was like, oh, "I got to think." Nah, and they just started rattling <laughs> off like two losses. Lost? 
And then he paused and you tried to go to the next question. Then he named another loss that he's had. And he's like, but he's, he's like, Hey man, I'm, I'm like, Yo, like you know, the, 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 I, I remember the losses, you know, and yeah. that, that's a coach's mentality, right? You know? Yeah. So. And I, and I, and I, and I also love how he said the only guy he could guard in the oh, big eight great. when he played was bill self. That was, I, ah, man, I, I shout out to coach Boyle, man. Like it's, Love them. Growing up outside of uh, Lawrence in Kansas City, yep. like, you know, you just know those names, right? Yep. Like, and, you know, Tad Boyle was the, I think he was the team captain, you know, in 84, which was 84, 85, or I think it was 84. Um, I think they made the Sweet 16 early day. It was Danny Manning's freshman that was 80, year. That was 86. They okay. made the, they made the uh, final four. No, the, yeah. the Elite Eight. Okay. Well, whatever, 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 whatever it coach Boyle's senior year was, it was like Danny Manning's freshman year. And then of yep. course we all know what happened in 88 when 88, yep. Danny and the miracles went on to yep. want it, but it was like, you know, coach Boyle was there during like some incredible growth years at Kansas. And, you know, the grad assistant coach at Kansas at the time under Larry Brown was John Calipari that year, yep. <laughs> which is just like, yeah, but you, you know, see who else they had too. They've got like current yeah. GMs. They have like, it's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, you, you, you look at a guy like uh, coach Boyle, or like where he's, where he came from, where he's, where he played at and then his coaching path. Right. And I mean, he mentioned, and he's like a Colorado guy, at heart, I think he was born in Pueblo, Colorado, but grew up in Greeley, you know, yep. and they yep. um, went to KU no and yep. eventually coached at Northern Colorado, you know. Um, yep. I feel like and, everybody did when, who we've interviewed. Exactly right. Yeah. We, we, we interviewed three guys last week who all at one point are currently coaching at University of Northern Colorado. Yeah. Um, but Coach Boyle's a good guy, man. And yeah. um, he gave a great interview and really down to earth, but like just hyper competitive. Yeah. And, and like I, and he, I, and he, I, he's a guy yeah. who you would want to have a family member play for, you know, just because it's like, you know, he's, yeah. you know, you know, they're in good hands there. And you could tell that by when you look at their current roster, like just kind of the loyalty on their team um, yeah. and, you know, what they've, what they're trying to do this year. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, like, he was great. I told him we're going to come see him at the, uh, the big 12 um, or the big 36 conference, whatever it is. We're going to go check that out in Kansas city in the fall, but uh, mm -hmm. really impressed with KJ Simpson. I'm going to throw him under the bus because he said in California said, guy. Yeah. yeah. But what, but what, what did we say about music? Who did he say? Little Wayne, know. didn't he? He said little Wayne before you called him out. I know. Yeah. Then he switched it to Tupac, which Tupac is a better answer anyways, but yeah, I mean, if you're um, Coast, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's, absolutely. um, and here, yeah, I mean, back to back days, we talked to two uh, Naismith finalists, you know, both yeah. are point guards. I'd say they're, you know, that between those two and Tyler Kolek at Marquette, those are the top three point guards in the country. I think yeah. Isaiah Stevens is probably the most, He's the like has just the quickest speed, you know, as a, like yep. a true point guard yep. has, just explosive yep. and whatnot. I think KJ Simpson is probably the most well rounded. I mean, yep. it's like from what he's doing on just across the entire stat sheet. Um, but both those guys were just so humble. Yep. You know, okay. So, yeah. And what did you think about Northern Colorado? Coach Smiley, man. And yeah, um, Coach Smiley and uh, St. Thomas. Yeah, St. Great dude. Um, Again, I mean, the hospitality, I mean, you walk in and it's, um, you know, we've interviewed a lot of, um, mid-major programs and yep. you went above and beyond with some swag that we have that we'll start yep. offering some people, yep. um, and some of our followers and supporters, but we made a sweatshirt that says mid-majors versus everyone that we wore there. Yep. Everybody, yep. <laughs> and you were, you, it was funny cause you were getting some footage, right. Of kind of like a, um, practice and the court and the facilities and stuff. And I like yep. walked through the training room and like. There's like a golfer that was like, oh, cool sweatshirt. And then there's like a soccer yeah. player that was like, oh, I love your sweatshirt and stuff. And like, yeah. he, like there was just like this warmth in that building, you know, yeah. where, you know, they're, they're well trained on, you know, how to treat people and the hospitality and just getting set up prior to the, uh, prior to the episode and the interview, like the people who we yeah. interacted with, like, were just great people. And then the actual interviews themselves. I mean, it's awesome. like probably the most laid back that you yeah. know like we've been yeah. just we easing fun. into the conversations yeah and, it was great um, yeah it was great it was a great time and i think uh i'm about to fall asleep but i think my battery's supposed to die so um <laughs> don't forget to subscribe rate and review follow us on twitter instagram don't, and everything else you can't you can't yeah. let your battery die 
No, it's going to. So we got to stop talking. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Full Core Podcast. Are you, I'm not done. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to die. I'm not. I am. I'm pressing end. Peace out. Don't forget this five-star review. Follow us. Bye, Felicia. Let's get it. <laughs>